I'm talking to Arvo Ott. He is the uh, managing director of the e-governance academy, but he was really starting with the X-Road um, system a long time ago, right? I mean, when did you, uh, when did you join the prime minister office? Ah, yes, uh, I joined the office in uh, 1993, but this uh, was still just some, some time to walk till this integration platforms were yeah, starting. Yeah, no, but I mean, uh, this was the beginning and yeah. you had no, and there was no ICT, there were no mainframes, there was, everything was very bare. Yeah, it was called that, that to use of uh, technology in, uh, in government and it was not called uh, e-government or something, it was simply just to use some computers and in 1993 it was planned. We had a pretty empty place, uh, we didn't have money as well, we, we had some good guys, uh, good people, mm -hmm. and then it was starting in, in 1993, but then uh, after some years we just faced a problem that we had to integrate different IT systems. Yeah, government. because everybody had these separate systems, I mean actually that's what we see here in this, uh, in this thing, everybody was were making different databases, and and all these different databases needed each other, right? all these departments needed each other and, and started to integrate together. Yeah, it's, uh, we, we, we had a um, general role for coordination of uh, different uh, activities in the electronic government. And then uh, we saw in, in the process of uh, budget planning that uh, the many institutions are doing something similar and we didn't have enough money. Mm -hmm. So it was like started project uh, to discuss different concepts on integration of different systems. Also we had some decision just to use uh, mainly data uh, security, not too widely this, uh, network level security issues, like we didn't have also enough budget to build uh, our own owned network mm -hmm. government. So it was decided that to use internet and this was in what year did you decide to use internet? Because I mean, our governments didn't want to touch internet for any kind of uh, serious business uh, until now. Uh, yeah, well, we, we were using internet from quite the beginning, but then the concept uh, like Pix Road started to fly or to, to start to, to, to have real results in 2000, 2001, 2002. Mm -hmm. And th this, uh, this decision was that uh, we, we can use internet for. This, uh, yeah, because change. you didn't have enough to make your own network. It was much more expensive to uh, protect, to make a protected uh, network yourself, and in, uh, versus to make the data prote go protected over the internet. Um, yes, because if uh, if you look to this kind of uh, environment, you have to connect all the ministries and all the departments, and that's and also municipalities and maybe hospitals and whatever. And schools, and uh, then you are building uh, more and more this uh, own network, and it's becoming more and more expensive. And uh, at the end, uh, the security risk inside of the system is becoming uh, the same, more or less the same, like an outside. And then you have clients outside, like citizens and maybe embassies and uh, whatever you need uh, outside. So the, uh, we, at the moment, we see that the concept to just uh, to based on. Uh, Simply internet, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, to have uh, encryption, uh, encryption of messages and uh, data which is sharing, then this concept is much cheaper than like to ha own your own very separate network. Yeah. So X Road is just um, a system of messaging between network between databases. I can basically query another database and I have permission to do so, and it goes protected this message over the internet. Um, yes, but we try to look at it a bit more wider, so we, we think that this six road in case of Estonia is uh, like a concept, which is not only uh, some technology basis, but also some processes behind, and also registration and get guarantees, giving guarantees for citizens to, to, for, for privacy, and all those things which are important for government uh, side, so it's like not only about uh, Transferring the mechanism, but also some building blocks to help uh, also institutions to yeah, share you, data. You mean like a rule that I am uh, I am responsible for my own data. I can determine who has access to my health uh, records and who has not. Yeah, this type of con uh, conceptual de decisions, but also some simple uh, mechanisms to make uh, fastly services and having some standard uh, blocks for, uh, for displaying services and uh, maybe portal type of things. 
also some uh, separate uh, component about electronic identification versus maybe digital uh, maps, uh, document management, just different components, but the core of this kind of uh, environment is uh, uh, secure data messaging. Messaging uh, system. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. You uh, started, uh, a, a, you did it until 2005. When did the ID, when did the whole project of the ID card, the secure ID card, uh, started, and how long did it take to implement? The uh, ID card uh, project started uh, from Ministry of Internal Affairs, and uh, it was started also the first test there in 2000, I think, and then the like, uh, first cards were issued in 2002. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's a uh, card is enabling you to for user identification, electronic identification, and yeah. digital sign. And I think it was the joke of this country because all these people had a card and they could do nothing with it. That, but that didn't take long. Uh, yes, it's always question that if you have a lot of customers, electronically identified customers, but not so many services, or if you have many services but you don't have customers, so you have to do it in parallel. But yeah. joke was that the card was good for cleaning window in a car. The window of the car yeah, could be clean. Yeah, because it's a good plastic, but, but it was, uh, no, yeah, it yes. was uh, like a, a little bit joke also. But uh, one uh, important issue with this card is, of course, it's uh, not only electronic identification, but also physical identification. So yeah, you can so that's why it was useful. Yeah, the so electronic part was not, but now the electronic part is much more important than the physical identification. Huh? Yeah, both. I think that you can travel and have some different things. And uh, one uh, important issue uh, as well is that uh, to avoid to have very many different cards. Mm -hmm. We have like uh, we don't have a social security card. You don't need to have a card a driving license because you can check it from a database. Mm -hmm. But you have to just uh, make clear who you are. Yeah, so Physical that's great. Person and electronic. So that was the first. Uh, that was the first service. Later, you also allowed uh, you could use the card to uh, sign digitally sign uh, a document. So nowadays, if you want to sign a contract or a or you buy a house or something, you can sign it digitally and it's used a million times a day. When did that uh, program start? Uh, actually, this uh, signing possibility was from the very beginning. It was one of the services. It was, uh, but uh, you know, people uh, uh, trust take time. Yeah. So it's uh, not people, people are not trusting immediately all the things. So we see also in uh, some electronic service, it takes some five years before people start to do it widely. Mm -hmm. And it's the same like what you see at uh, the digital signing, it starts, but not so many people uh, used it. Uh, it's now growing, growing, growing. The banks are very much demanding that you should sign uh, some, something uh, also, also uh, like uh, internet banking uh, identification mechanism. So it's like, and uh, frankly to say it's a business sector is using much more widely. Uh, than yeah, I, I talked to a, a theater director. And uh, she said, if somebody, she, she had one person last year who wanted to sign a document by paper and she didn't trust it. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> so that was the uh, other way. Uh, but it's uh, really convenient sometimes because, I, like in our work here, we are traveling all the time. We have to sign the documents, we have to make uh, like a business with banks and all other things. So it, you can do it everywhere, except if you don't have internet. Yeah. More. In some places you, we don't have a mobile roaming, so you, you, we can use also mobile like it. Yeah. You use it now a million times a day, about 400, uh, 300, between 300 and 400 times a year. Is it still scalable? Is it still fast enough? Uh, is the um, is, is system ready for, for the future? Yeah, you, you, we think that uh, the concept is uh, seems that it's uh, living already more than ten years. It's like uh, possibilities to grow. It's uh, uh, wide. Uh, of course, uh, somebody can say that Estonia is so small. I Maybe mean, databases are not huge uh, yet. But uh, I don't think that there are really problems about bandwidth of the connection. No. So it's uh, problems might be much more some something else, like not willing to do something, or some institutions maybe not too happy to make uh, changes or re-engineering uh, some of the processes, but but in, in capacity. And, uh, no problem. Right. How many people are programming on X uh, Road and keep maintaining it and uh, and expanding all the uh, different functionality? I think that all this uh, software development is maybe. 20 today, 30 or maybe less even. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, in uh, like running those uh, components, there are a lot of people. Like every uh, usually all those uh, the, uh, components have some administrators and 
You so mean these 500 databases which are connected to X-Road? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work happening there. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the integration layer, that's not a lot of work. Um, not uh, really, and, and of course uh, business companies are also helping to, to, to integrate and in some cases it like, depends on how the ministries are working. Sometimes they are doing by themselves, sometimes using some business companies. But all this kind of development of these core components, yes. this is like done by 10 people, not maybe it's 20, 20 or, but, people, but not, yeah. not so many. Did you have any idea when you came up with this whole idea with a couple of people? <laughs> In the, did, did you have any idea that this would work so well? Uh, uh, I think that my colleague Uno Walner had a dream that it should be much faster. Uh, <laughs> and uh, now we are, everybody is saying that yes, we are happy. And mm -hmm. it was happening. Uh, in the first two years we were a little bit uh, afraid because we spent the money and not so many people started to use it immediately. And, uh, we sometimes call that this honeymoon period of project manager because so-called honeymoon period because uh, the project manager has uh, problems and uh, difficult issues in the first year or two. Uh, especially if the uh, public sector is asking that you spend money, but what, what, how you show our customers, or you, maybe you have hundred thousand but not two million. So it was a nice period to basically fix all the problems. You know, having all these people, we just came in and Zaire came in and you had Finland come in and everybody's coming in to like, take a look at your project and you're also helping other countries to implement it. Are there already other countries who have a system similar like this? Uh, it's um, it's uh, difficult to compare because uh, several countries are doing also this. Um, now most of the countries are dealing with this architecture and uh, service-oriented uh, framework development. Uh, a good example is Singapore, but uh, some principles are different. Uh, our Austria is doing nice. Uh, I, I understand Austria. Austria. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, I, I know also that uh, Belgium made the many steps, but I don't know what the situation. Uh, so we, all the countries are doing at the moment, but uh, yes, it's, uh, uh, I, I would say that so widely uh, integrated uh, uh, services and uh, systems are till now maybe only in Estonia or may, maybe we can find some other places, but, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, like, uh, this has been mo most complicated to convince all the players to yeah. play the same play. You said it is not a technical thing, it's an organization, a political and policy thing. Yeah, exactly, so because uh, I, I'm pretty sure that it, it's technology is uh, the simplest part of the story. Mm -hmm. Of course, it should be as simple as possible, then, but then it's how to like, uh, solve the organization and legislative and other problems in government is uh, more, more, more time for it. Thank you for doing it and thank you for sharing. Appreciate it. <laughs>